World famous Butch and Bob Show here on WIFO 105.5 FM and Jess up Big Dog Country Radio. Morning, Bob. Good morning. All right. We made it through the eclipse and no Armageddon. We're still here. Everything's still fine. The moon's been passing between the sun and the earth for millions of years and we're all still here. <laughs> That's a good thing. <laughs> That's a good thing. It's a, it's a good thing. Yeah, and so... Um, I mean, I, I, was, I waited all year for that Wayne County BC game. I was kind of worried that the world's going to go going to get to see the game. <laughs> <laughs> I've been waiting all year for this game. Yeah, because there's an eclipse in, in North America, the whole world's coming to an end. <laughs> yeah. So the game will be played today at 6 o'clock. I encourage everybody to come on out and support the Yellow Jack. It's going to be a huge series this week between Wayne County and BC. So. Need a big crowd out there today at Howard Bow Warren Field at 6 o'clock. Yeah, without a doubt. Uh, without a doubt. Well, we got a special guest in this morning here on the World Famous Butch and Bob Show. Bob, who do we have? We've got County Commissioner Jamie Hickox in the studio. Appreciate her coming in. Again, we've been reporting on this uh, April meeting that she ended in the executive session where Chairman Mike Gordon came out and announced that uh, information in the closed session had been leaked and they're going to find a remedy for it. So, Jamie Hickox got up and said that uh, there wasn't really an executive session to discuss personnel. It was about to be rating her, so I just thought it was best. And for full disclosure, that was the night of the Iowa uh, LSU basketball girls game, so I didn't stay for the executive session. But I texted uh, you and the uh, county minister that morning to see if anything happened, and you called immediately and said, where are you at? You missed all this. So you said, I just thought we'd get you in here to find out your take on what took place Monday night, at, you know, during the executive session, after the executive session, and you state now that you've filed two uh, complaints to the t- state's attorney general's office. First, how do you do that? Do you just call them, or do you have to go to Atlanta, or how do you do that? No, it's a, a portal. <clears throat> Excuse me. Good morning, guys. Good it's morning. A, <laughs> it's a portal through the attorney general's website. It took me two days to figure out how to do it. Um, but I had reached out to their office and they were gracious enough to send me the portal and the link to do it. One of them was a open meetings violation and the other one is an open records violation. And what do they tell you? They're investigated? Or um, you, you just present all the facts and you know I'm a documenter. I document everything. So uh, I put the facts in there and uh, put the supporting documents in there and we're just waiting for the... Uh, um, attorney general to make his decision so let's go back like i said they have on the agenda executive session discuss personnel they announced they're going back to executive session discuss personnel like i said when you came back to executive session you were very upset and basically stated that it wasn't an executive session it was just a decision to berate you so explain that to us well when personnel was on there um i just immediately defaulted to it was our county administrator's one year anniversary in april so i we did a uh, so i just assumed that this would be some kind of an evaluation so i did my homework worked up a whole thing i'm ready to go i, I had no idea um when when i got there that is obviously what it was not and i'm like whoa 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 i'm not participating in this if if we need to interrogate me, if we need to present evidence, we need to do it right out there from that bench in front of the public. Elected officials are not above any type of um, scrutiny. Absolutely. If you want to give scrutinize me, you're going to have to do it in front of the public. And I was upset because everybody in well, the whole meeting, you saw the you were there when I had to get off the bench and go look at a monitor for information that obviously everybody else in the room already had. Um, they, they stated they had called a contractor, had an in-depth conversation about the Senior Citizen Center. Nobody else got off the bench and went and looked at a monitor to see the information, the numbers, only me. Um, and that's really the reason I'm not running. I, did, I chose not to rerun is because there's 6,000 people in District 5 that at this moment in time have absolutely no representation. Um, the only thing I can surmise of that is there is a concerted effort to keep public information from the public. And that is what the um, interrogation uh, was about. What were they upset about? I mean, what, what uh, this, the 
information, the word on the street anyway. I'll just go over there. The story about the two hundred seventy five thousand dollars that went missing. Uh, that information that, that never came upset? from. Is that, is that what they were upset about? That information did not originate in, nor was it discussed in um, executive session. That that information originated from an email. The email date is November fifteenth, twenty twenty three, and it states the issue happened on August the seventh, twenty twenty three. Who sent out the email? Um, the county administrator. And he sent it out to the commissioner. Yes, sir. I was going to say he didn't send it out to the media. No, no. And and from that moment, because I the first would, time I heard about the money was I thought it was an open session they discussed. It was. That. It was an open session. I had made the statement right. that we had lost one hundred and seventy thousand, two hundred and seventy thousand dollars due to our lack of policy. That has been <clears throat> my mantra since the moment I got on the board. This is not monopoly money. This is real taxpayers' money. This is real money. There's not a tree in the backyard that you go just pull it off of when we have to fund something. This is hard-working people doing everything they can to afford their homeowner's insurance, their grocery bill, and pay their taxes. If people cannot afford to live in Wayne County, where does that leave Wayne County? This is $270,000 of real money. My stance has been from the moment I've got here that the county government is too large at this point. We are talking 200 employees and a $30 million budget. How can one individual, one guy, be responsible for all the administration of the county, all the human resources of the county. He does have a human resources, a, a clerk, a payroll clerk, um, and the chief financial officer. I have reached out to so many organizations going, is this reasonable? No, this is not reasonable. My point of saying the $270,000 loss was due to lack of policy was to say we could have paid for at least two years of a chief financial officer or a consultant. We could have a, um, a CPA, a consulting group that partners with the county and i can assure you they would come with a list of best practices and just joining us jamie hickox county commissioner in the studio with us did you have, have you been able to find out where the how we lost two hundred seventy thousand dollars? is that been told <clears throat> as yet as far I mean, as i know I, mean, I keep hearing we were scammed somehow but have you been able to get yeah, to the bottom I do of know. it no i do know but that one thing i don't know that i'm at liberty to gotcha. to say All right well i talked to one commissioner you know like i said about this they said that they don't feel that they, they said they were just asking questions back there about information they had heard on the street that had been leaked out and want to know where the leak was coming from. <coughs> the, um, sorry, the, um, I mean, you, the Georgia code, Georgia code 50 dash 14 dash four is so very clear of what is allowed and what is not allowed inside of his executive session. Our government is set up in such a manner where there's a lot of safeguards for the public's business to be conducted in the public forum. There is an affidavit that's required by the state. It is required for the presiding officer of, the, of these executive sessions to sign an affidavit under the penalty of perjury. Um, there, this is a felony. There, so the, the law is serious about what is allowed and what is not allowed. It, that's not an allowable offense of what... I had no idea there was a leak. I stand on, on the fact that I have leaked nothing. Public information is public. There are things that are from executive session. I don't say a word about them. So you don't think you were the leak? I know I wasn't the leak. Here, listen real clear. I am not <laughs> the leak. What information are they saying that was leaked? The two things that I know of were the um, the two hundred and seventy thousand right. dollars. Um, that that was, but still at this moment in time, what's been leaked? There's who, who, what, where, when, and why, and that that leak, quote unquote, was um, pretty knowledgeable in government circles long before I made the statement from the from the uh, bench and you're saying that information came from an email it came from an email it did not come from executive session i think they were mad and they got confused and that just 
um, could could fetter their fire. So let's just run with that one. That's was, what I think. Was there anything else they said that was leaked? Uh, yes, um, we have uh, we have a consultant for fire. Um, it's the National Fire Service Office. Uh, we pay a consulting fee to, uh, it, we, pay the, we pay that office $25,000 a year. And they are not part of the um, ISO, you know, the insurance rating, the government agency that rates our insurance. They are an independent office that um, consults they consult with the city of jessup they consult there's only three of these offices nationwide so they have a long list of clients and i think that for twenty five thousand dollars that is absolutely money well spent um we were in we on executive session sometime in this year was personnel we came out of that executive session and voted on a fire coordinator position. Once that vote has been taken, that is unsealed. So we're, we're no longer secretly um, thinking about a fire coordinator position. That position has been, um, uh, been developed, been voted on, and now we have hired a fire coordinator. Um, what is not allowed, in, that is allowed in executive session. Do we want to create this job? Do we not want to create this personnel position? What is not allowed in exec executive session is how to fund budgetary items are not, are not inside those narrowly defined um, areas which you are allowed to go back into executive session for. I mean, think about it there and listening, like what's in executive executization is discussed personnel, litigation. There's certain things you can discuss behind closed doors. And but you, have, but, you, but you have to stay with those parameters. Yes, but, you do. But I told people, government, city and county government, school board for 41 years, there's a lot more being discussed in executive session than that. But that's just, that's why I have pushed and talk to my legislators about doing away with executive sessions altogether because to me it's all public information. But anyway, here's what I got to ask you, and this is what confuses me. And I say, I've got this favorite saying of mine covering, like I said, county and city government, school board for 41 years. Politics ruins friendships. No. Oh. I go back to the beginning when you first ran. Mm -hmm. You and Kevin McCreary and Mike Gordon, it was like, the three some the three musketeers. Mm -hmm. Yes. Y'all went on family vacations. Y'all yes. were good friends. Yes. We're gonna get rid of Ed Jeffers. You get rid of Ed Jeffers the first meeting. Everything's hunky dory. And then all of a sudden we're at this point where it's four one yes. and you're the one vote. Yes. What happened? <clears throat> what, what transpired? What <clears throat> what dissolved this close relationship between you and Kevin and Mike Gordon? I mean I where, have no idea. I mean I, Mike Gordon <clears throat> called me yesterday and you know, stated that he was concerned you were coming on the show. He he said that he feels everything fell apart during the SPLOS 5 negotiations. I would agree that with he, that. That he says you became more of a city commissioner than a county commissioner. That he that you defended your uh, husband's position more than you did the county. And Hold on. Let's just stop right there. Where is District 5? But I understand it's mostly in the city just There you go. But there what, is. But, but his, his statement was that. They have a city commissioner representative. No, they on the county commission. Who no, is the city no. commission representative on the county commission? Because those are six thousand taxpayers. Right. They pay taxes. They don't just pay city taxes. My tax bill doesn't just say city of Jessup. You pay for your fire. You pay for the street lights, and you pay for uh, um, police protection. Right. No, that's not what I get. I pay every tax that somebody in Madry Springs pays. Plus, I pay an additional tax for an additional services. The city of Jessup deserves representation on the county board. Jessup, Georgia is not an independent country. It is a city inside of Wayne County that deserves representation. I'm not going to move off that stance. I understand, but I'm just, that's, that was his stance. That, but, and you just admitted that you feel that that's where the relationship dissolved was during the spa spot. Yes, so, I certainly do. Well, why do you think that was? I mean, what's your take on that? That, that? That was his take, that he thought that you were more representative of the city side than the county side. Do you, you agree with that? or do you? No, I, re I very much 
agree that the city of Jessup needs representation. Um, I think the the friendship and it breaks my heart. You know, some people say, you know your friends are your friends you know those friends that you lost were really enemies that decided to quit pretending to be your friends that's a sad statement i said but i I say you don't know i said i've seen it for many years and i I still have people i know that were i mean they were very very bob i tell you what politics just ruined the friendship and i loved these men i don't have a lot of friends my circle is very very small from being married to Ralph and he you know I've been sitting in those county meetings for 10 years the only people that have been in those meetings longer than me there's three there's Drew Davis there's Amanda Hanna and there is Boot Thomas I've been there longer than everybody else sitting right there there's a lot of backstory you get information on just from sitting there and watching it flow why do we have cameras in those um meeting rooms right now because for the last seven years i turned on my iphone with the crappy sound because i believe that people needed the information it is not the government knows so much sit back and shut up and let the government do what's best for you with your money that's not what we're based on we're based on your government will never operate right without you Those negotiations fell completely apart over that industrial park. That's where it absolutely fell apart because our future as a county lies in that industrial complex. If we don't grow, you can kiss our kids goodbye because they're going to, they will not be able to afford to live here. You have to have jobs. You have to be able to afford housing. You have to be able to pave the roads. That industrial park is absolutely critical. And when the the no industry is going to entertain plopping their company down in the middle of an industrial park that does not have utilities, the IDA has gone to great lengths and i will be the first one to cheer this most of them are volunteers but dell keith has done a fabulous job of leading that charge and they have a plan and they work their plan every single day and they have acquired that land they have a plan to get utilities there prior to 2020 that plan to get those utilities over to that park were at a tune of nine million dollars to to today it is 22 million dollars the county has agreed to do in-kind work dirt work which our road department is the best of the best of the best those hard-working people and most of them have been there for 10 15 20 30 years in that department they have been moving that dirt but you can't compare um the city the city didn't say hey why don't you build your industrial park inside the city limits? That's not what happened. The Industrial Development Authority went to the city and said, please annex this piece of property in because we'll never have an industrial park without utilities. We will partner together. The city, the county, and the IDA will partner together to get this done. At this point in time, there is excess lost funds. Hear me clearly. The hospital was paid off in December of 2022. That was 23% of the SPLOST 4 budget. That money is undesignated funds. Someone, somewhere, sat behind a computer and redesignated those that 23% somewhere else, and there's no vote to back it up. At least put that 23% over on that industrial park where that will benefit the entire county. Instead, we divided that 23% up only in county projects. The city of Screven got zero the city of Odom got zero. The city of Jessup got zero. I'm saying do the next right thing for the taxpayer of Wayne County. I said this before, you know, hindsight is twenty twenty. but as you mentioned, most people believe that industrial park is a vital project. Um, but so my question is, why wasn't that considered as part of the SPLOST Referendum. Why okay. wasn't that a project? You know, if that's so, if that's so vital, so crucial to the development of Wayne County, why didn't somebody have the foresight to say, you know what, we need to put that on the SPLOS referendum? 
I, what I, happened? I, what happened I, there? I cannot answer that. I wasn't on the SPLOS committee. And in all fairness, I made the motion to put um, Kevin McCrary and Mike Gordon on that SPLOS committee. I did make that motion. But I, you wanted on that committee, too. No, right? I wanted on the contracts committee. Oh, the contracts committee. Okay. That's, um, when, that's, when, that's when they made the comment that it was a conflict of interest. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's what. You but you know us. what is just astonishing is that the people of Wayne County, it's a conflict of interest for the people of Wayne County to make a vote on whether a husband and wife can sit on two separate boards accountable to the people of Wayne County. But it is not a conflict of interest for other family members to be voted into other offices that work side by side or for the city and the county to each hire brothers if inside their perspective areas of expertise. We can't be selective in what's, what's allowable or not allowable. This is just a personal attack on Ralph and Jamie Hickox because because, and it's not even Ralph's fault. Poor guy, he can't say nothing, and his wife won't shut up. He has it tough. I'm not going to shut up. What's right is right, and doing the next right thing for the taxpayers of Wayne County is right. Let me ask you this, going back to the meeting. Like I said, they made the comment that something's you know, it's going to be remedied. Uh, we read today that, like I said, we'll read it again. It says, any commissioner that divulges has previously divulged or is threatened to divulge confidential information, legal advice, or strategy discussion may be excluded from participation in executive session by a majority affirmative vote by the Board of Commissioners. So that's one action they could take. Do you think they're going to go that route, that they're going to have a meeting and, and vote to exclude you from the executive session? I don't have any idea what they're going to do. You, you know, I have no that. idea what the um, – okay, first of all, the rules of executive session. You have been in the, how many executive sessions have you seen come out? And what did, one or two things happen when they come out of exec, executive session? One or two things happen. One. No action was taken. No action was taken. Maybe. Or two, a motion is made and action is taken. All right. Those are the two allowable things to do when you come out of executive session. All right. No action taken or a motion is made. On this particular evening, Neither of those things happened. Right, we have that. information that information has been leaked in executive session. We will determine a remedy at a later date. Now, what is that? Is that an action? Here's an email right here where the next morning at 9.05 a.m., I wrote asking for minutes of where this vote was taken. I got no response. At 1.01 p.m., I reached out to um, our county administrator, and I asked, what, did the sheriff investigate a leak into uh, the executive session? He's like, not to my knowledge. Did the county office investigate a leak into executive session? Not to my knowledge. Well, here's where we're at. The chairman of the presiding officer of the governing board of the Wayne County came out and didn't say no action is taken and didn't didn't make a motion but he said we have information that information from executive session was leaked we will decide a remedy at a later date where was the investigation I was told that well I had a conversation with the chairman of the board really does that define executive session investigation? Is that what defines that? Is this now an edict? Is this an absolute declaration of the governing authority of Wayne County? We have a leak because the county administrator and the chairman of the board had a conversation. Hmm. Well, again, we'll follow it from this point forward. It'd be interesting to see what does transpire, but... Again, uh, also continue to follow your complaints with the state's attorney general. Have they given you any timeline on when they'll make a decision or what do they do? I mean, I'm still confused on what they do. I mean, you file the complaints, but what do they do? Do they come well, in? Do they do investigation? Do they? Do they from get my understanding, going? you know, there it's not. There's not a page of um, rules or what to expect next. Right, you. you know, I reached out and I've. You know, they've been very kind. Um, very, very helpful. And I did not put my opinion in anything. I had a lot of opinions. I didn't put any of them. It's not my job. My job is just to put in facts and facts and facts and let the wheels of justice turn. Well, 
I got to ask you this question too. I said you decided not to run for county commissioner again. Yeah. You have any regrets in that not running again? No. No, I don't. Just ready to get out? No, not at all. I would run. I would run. I'd run. I'd love Wayne County. It is hard. So you're not running because you feel that you're not effective. Is that what you're saying? These five people, there is. It is painfully obvious for anybody who sits in those meetings or watch those meetings. There is no way for these five people to forge a path forward. And the only people paying the price is the taxpayers of Wayne County. Right now with this fire this fire um consultant this is this is the reason I everybody needs representation. He says in a in an email a question was recently asked if there are any major ill effects on the Pine Forks Country Club Community Fire District if the city of Jessup is removed as being the country club's primary fire provider. I'm turning the pages. It's a two-page letter. I'm only reading three sentences of it. Um, it continues and it says the city fire department currently maintains an insurance service office PPC reading rating of class four, which one is one of the best residential homeowners ratings discounts available. And ISO class one, two, or three truly only helps commercial properties. So it will be important for the county to provide a fire station that maintains a class for rating to replace the city's void if insurance rates are to be equally maintained if the county chooses not to provide a new fire station then this area would be re-rated by an iso into a class 10 meaning property owners insurance rates would almost triple Where's the representation in that? I am not rerunning for county commission because there's too much at stake. There are a lot of very capable, very smart, passionate people that love Wayne County. I'm not going to step aside from politics, but I am not going to cut off everybody else's nose to spite my face. I don't have to win at the, at the expense of of losing a whole district of people that's not right maybe a time will come where i can run but representing these people sometimes you do your best work by not sitting in that seat look it up again we appreciate you coming in always a pleasure and they said it's always entertaining for sure but we appreciate you coming in we'll see what the uh, reaction is by the other commissioner see if they have anything to say but again i do appreciate you coming in and explaining what took place or what transpired in your opinion this past meeting in april first monday of april so as you mentioned uh it was a first you know because like i said after executive sessions there's either two announcements one that no action was taken or two a motion is going to be made but this was just an announcement from the chairman saying that they feel that a leak's been there and something's going to be done to remedy the situation so I said the one action they can take to remedy the situation, again, is to vote to exclude you from executive sessions, but you haven't heard whether or not they're going to do that or not. What's what's going to be the reaction if that's what they do? I mean, what would you do then? I'll do the next right thing. What's that? I don't know. You know? I don't know. File another complaint with the Attorney General's office? I I don't know. I'm not there. We're not there. I I can't run off what ifs. I got you. Again, we appreciate you coming in. I said always... You know, very informative, but I said, thanks again. You've always been, like I said, you and Ralph always accept the invitation. We appreciate it, like I said, because me and Butch say it all the time. These chairs are open. All we're trying to do is get the information to the people, as much information as possibly can, and y'all have more information than we've got, that's for sure. So we appreciate you coming in. All right, Jamie. Thanks. Have a good day. Thank Jamie you. Hickox, our special guest here on the world-famous Butch and Bob show here on WYFO. Once again, Bob, tell folks about the big baseball game going on today at Howard Bow Warren Field. This is game one of a three-game set, again, due to weather on Thursday. The game two has been moved to B.C. on 530 tomorrow, but the first game is today at 6 o'clock at Howard Bow Warren Field, and game three is back here Friday. It's a three-game set. We have a 9-0 and region record. They've got a 7-2 and region record. So this is a crucial series in the region standings for that number one spot in the state playoffs. All right. Sounds good. Get out there and wear that gold and white and black and yellow and support them jackets.
at Howard Bow Warren Field this afternoon. Wayne County, Benedictine, 6 o'clock, first pitch. Go out there and support them jackets. All right, we got giveaways coming away soon. We got a Wild Adventure ticket voucher we'll give away for four one day emissions to Wild Adventures Park. We got some movie passes to give away and pizza. So keep tuned in for your chance to win right here on Big Dog Country. Don't let Trump win. I'm Dave Anthony, Fox News. That's the gist of the special counsel's file.